What is going on guys, Kieran here, and today we are taking a look at Transformers The Last Night Voyager Class Decepticon Nitro, or as it's called in the movie, Nitro Zeus. As you can see, he transforms into a very, very nice looking jet. Now this is just another Voyager Class figure that is just really, really nice and solid, and I've been pretty impressed with them so far. Very nice looking jet mode. From the top there, I'm just, it looks really nice and slick. The panel lines look really, really cool. On the underside, he does have quite a few obvious robot parts, and he's got quite a bit of undercarriage, but... I don't know, I just think the way this guy transforms kind of makes up for that, and I, I, I dig the way this guy looks in vehicle mode. He looks really nice and bulky, he looks very mean, very threatening. He's a good size as well, let's just quickly compare him next to the Voyager class Optimus, if I can get these guys in frame. So he's a pretty good size, very, very solid jet former. Um, we haven't had a, a proper, like, good Earth mode jet former for a while from the movie line, and I really, really like this guy. He's not perfect, I will get to that later on, that's mainly due to the transformation. But I think this vehicle mode is pretty nice and solid. Got some nice paint apps, nice Septicon symbols on the wings. There's some red, some black. The cockpit can actually open up, so you can sit a little dude in there. He has landing gear that you can fold up on the front here. Now this little section here, you can see there are little mini guns on that. They are meant to be his uh, landing gear in the vehicle mode. I don't know whether that's focused or not. Let's pop that back so we can actually stand up. But yeah, pretty damn solid vehicle mode, I've got to say. These missile pods here are removable, but they can have a pain to do. He has some nice thrusters under here so he can sort of hover. I dig him. Very, very good jet mode. Now, in my last night figure reviews, I haven't really shown off the packaging all too much because I don't really think it was relevant, but I will show off the packaging for Nitro because he has a completely different design on the packaging than what he does on the actual figure and in the movie. In the movie, he is basically a Shockwave clone um, because, I, I mean, I'm not complaining about that. It looks pretty fucking cool. He's probably the coolest Decepticon other than Megatron in the film. Um, but yeah, he's got this sort of, you know, Cyclops head and uh, on the box. He does not. He has kind of a weird looking design. He has four eyes on the um, on the box. But in the movie, he only has one. And on the toy, he only has one. So I just thought it was kind of odd. Now, the transformation is where I can get to some of the complaints I have with this figure. It's not difficult. It's just very, very fiddly. Some of it's kind of clever. I kind of dig how the wings transform. But a lot of it is just, it's very fiddly. I have no idea how the friggin' hell a child is meant to transform this on their own. It's not Revenge of the Fallen Mixmaster, but it's just very, very finicky, and it can be a pain. It took me a while to get the hang of it after I first got this guy. What you're going to do first is remove these missiles, and they are really, really tight on my figure. Remove those, put them off to the side, flip up the landing gear. I'm going to take the section, fold that up. I'll just unpeg like that. I'm going to take the wings, they will unpeg from numerous little tabs underneath here. Just sort of try and grab them from the back there and just lift them up and get them out of the way. And we'll do those later. Um, if I actually just flip these up and then we'll do the rest later. I will do that now because I always forget about them and they're kind of important. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the underside. I'm going to take these legs, or all these legs, I'm going to pull them out just like that on both sides. Pull those out, and they also do peg into the uh, the thruster section there. So just rotate these out, rotate them down, get them out of the way, like that. Then what we're going to do, now this is kind of where it gets a little bit complex. The arms, we're going to take this arm, fold it out, flip out his fist, flip out his cannon, and just rotate that around, just get it out of the way. Then we're going to come around here, we're going to take this leg, lift it up, and then this is kind of where it gets confusing. This part here, the uh, the front nose cone, has to unpeg and then lift up past this section to lock into place. So we'll fold that up, get that in there like that. Then you can take the, uh, the leg, fold that back down, and they do peg together at his crotch there. And then that forms the legs. It's kind of clever how they do that, but I have no idea how a kid is meant to figure that out. And to be honest, the first thing you want to do when you get this figure is throw the instructions away because they are terrible. But as you can just see there, just fold out the feet. Literally just fold those down. And there are all the legs. So that is pretty much the hard bit out of the way. Let's just sort his arms out. I'm going to take the, uh, the front nose cone and just split it just like that. I'm going to rotate these out to the sides to form kind of a little arm cannon sort of thing. Like that. I'm going to take the head here, this whole panel. I'm going to fold the head forward. Take this, fold it in like that. And that sort of locks everything into place. And there we're nearly done. You can leave him like that if you want, if you want the wings on his back. 
Um, I think that kind of looks cool, but the actual official transformation is when I lift these pieces up, these parts are annoying as well because they always fly off. I'm going to take these wings and they just sort of fold up into a little, uh, little thruster there. They just sort of wrap around each other and fold up. It's kind of a pain, they do like to come off. But once you do that, make sure this tail section is tabbed in. And there is Nitro in his absolutely bitchin' looking robot mode. And just to sort of complete the look, you can take those missile pods from earlier, and they clip on to these thruster sections here on his back. Just like so. And uh, there he is, guys. I really, really dig this guy's design. I thought he looked awesome in the movie. And as soon as I saw the reveal of this guy, I knew I had to go and get him because he looks awesome. This is kind of what I wish Dark of the Moon Shockwave was because, I don't know, he looks less brutish than Shockwave, but he looks very, very menacing and just very, very cool looking. Honestly, it's got one of the most awesome looking robot designs for a Voyager figure that I have seen for a while. For a quick comparison, here he is next to the Voyager class Megatron figure, just so you can see the two together. And Nitro is a little bit taller with the uh, the missile pods on the back, but they're, they are about the same size. They're very nice and bulky. I think Nitro is a little bit smaller than Megatron in the film. I don't know whether they're about the same size. I don't know. Um, they, were, they were fairly similar in height, I believe. Look at him. He looks friggin' brutal. I dig this guy a lot. Now, as you can see, this guy is very heavily armed. Uh, he's got a arm cannon there that, that can actually retract. So if you don't want that out all the time, you can sort of... Well, kind of. It, mine always seems to just fall out, but yeah. Um, it's a really cool looking cannon on the side here. Oh, we actually missed a step. What am I doing? These little pieces here fold out. I always forget about these. Yeah, so they fold out. And uh, that gives them a bit more of a movie accurate look. I dig the look of this cannon. I like how the nose cone just sort of becomes... Like his, his arm cannon, what would have been Shockwave's arm cannon. Because, dude, this this guy looks like Shockwave. He should have been Shockwave. Look at him. The head. Now, he's kind of, I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's like a little headmaster sort of thing or something. Or he was meant to be a headmaster. Or he's going to get remoulded in the future. But he, his head can come off. And let's just see if we can get a little bit of detail on that. Sort of focus. Will it focus? Go on, focus. There we go. Kind of. He doesn't really have light piping. It's just painted on. But... I really do dig a look at this, this head sculpt. In the movie, he did have more of the sort of Shockwave head sculpt from Dark of the Moon. I don't know, I just feel like this is what Shockwave should have been in the film. Speaking of Dark of the Moon Shockwave, here he is next to him. Just so you can see the two together. Now, Shockwave might be a little bit dusty because I just had to dig him out of a spider infested attic because that's where he's been for the past like three years. But there they are together. Now you can see obviously the difference between the head sculpts. Now in the film, Nitro has this little head sculpt here, um, the more shockwave-esque, it's a bit more round, whereas in the toy, you can see Nitro has a completely new head, and actually I think I prefer this one, I just, I dig the, uh, sort of the, the antenna on it, he just looks a little bit more tactical to me, and I just kind of like that, he looks less brutish, almost forgot in terms of articulation, his head is kind of on a ball joint, so you can rotate that basically any which way you want, uh, the arms can rotate 360 degrees, but they are a little bit hampered, uh, you can bend at the elbow, rotate up here, no waist articulation, but you can bend at the hip, in and out, rotate at the thigh there, bend at the knee, and the feet can pivot. So he's actually got a pretty good range of motion on him. Toy-wise though, Nitro Zeus is a lot of fun. Once you get the transformation down, he's not as much of a pain in the ass, but seriously guys, when you first get this this figure, just throw the instructions away, because I don't know what has happened to these, these instructions recently with the movie figures, but they are terrible, and you cannot see what the hell you're going to be doing. It's not very clear that you have to sort of pull this leg out so you can swap the arm around, because these have to cross over each other. It's definitely not very clear on that, so just take a look at some reviews, guys. Don't faff about with the instructions. It's a waste of time. I had to just sort of watch someone else's video because this it was sort of annoying me and uh, I couldn't read the instructions because they were just, they're, they're a pain, they're really not clear anymore. I wish they'd sort of sort that out. But that is it for Nitro Zeus, guys. This guy is friggin' awesome. You should probably get him. He looks amazing on the shelf. He's just a bit of a pain in the ass to transform, but once you've got it down, um, I think this guy is a pretty solid figure. He's another very nice addition to the Last Night Voyager figures. I haven't really been disappointed with the single Last Night Voyager yet. I haven't got Hound. I've got Scorn on the way, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to those two. But 
yeah, I think all the ones that I've gotten so far have been very nicely done figures. I think we're on a, a bit of a return to form with the movie figures, especially with the Voyagers. These guys are very, very nice. Anyway, that is it for the review, guys. Cheers for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.